Hey, welcome back. In this uh, video, we're talking about NAT3 and Prisma. And in the last video, we showed how we can now read all the users from the database. So now let's see how we can delete a user from a database. So let's go to, yep, let's go to uh, the Prisma website. And we can see how, uh, where are we here? Delete. So all it says here, you get a delete user where, depending on uh, whether, whether it's, well, whatever is unique, you know, so for us, it's just going to be the ID. All right, so let's do that. So we are going to go to our application, go to the users, delete AP in the API here. I'm going to command A or control A on delete. Then this is going to we'll say, uh, this is going to be users delete. This might not be correct. I'm just going to copy this actually. And maybe not put the return statement there yet. Now Prisma will return all right so what we're gonna do here uh, we're gonna get the event object which is sent every time you send a request to the server. And we're just going to say, um, we're gonna say const body because await read body event. And then we're going to say here, if body, dot id right. uh, we're going to say here let the user be now then uh, we're going to change this to user i'm going to say where id equals body dot id so this is what this is going to do. It's just going to delete um, the user if we have this. Um, and then uh, what we're going to do here after this statement, we're going to return the user. So we're going to either return null if we're not we don't have an ID, or well, let's see what happens actually. Let's return the user. Now I'm going to stop and start the server here because we say we made some changes to this to, to the back end, the server, and then we need to restart the server. All right, so we're going to do some testing here. See what ha happens if we delete using an ID that exists and an ID that doesn't exist. All right, so we're gonna delete uh, number six here, me user. So when we do a get request, we query the database, we get the last user. And then um, I'm gonna send a delete request. And we expect to have an ID here with a number actually, uh, and that number is six. So let's see what happens. All right, so this went through, it, it returned the user that we just deleted, 
let's take a look at um, if we do if we get requests on all the users user with id6 should not exist okay so that's good if we want to verify some more in the database this id should not exist after we do a refresh here okay so it's gone but let's do some uh so that's how you do it and this is a simple example but if you want to do some error checking here right like what if we we send an id that that, that, that doesn't exist what's going to happen all right oh that's not correct uh delete all right so prisma will send you this you know status code 500 error code you know and there's a way in, in which you can um check your prisma errors um we won't do that here it's just the simple example but I believe it's something like this. Let's say we uh, remove the user from that, and we say then uh, response, just as, as an example, I'm gonna get the user is going to be in response. So that's same user. And then I believe there's an error. Um, No, they're saying that's the correct there. That's, that's incorrect. Let me see. If I don't find it in like one minute, then we won't take a look at it. All right, but there is a way in which I'm, let me look at some more advanced code that I've written that includes like all kinds of errors, <laughs> all kinds of error checking here. So let's see here. Why Anyway, you know what? It probably doesn't matter right now. Let's look at this one. I have so many codes here. If user return error. No. We'll probably just do this later. In case okay no you know what it's a catch an error there we go catch async e okay so let's try to do that it is catch then it's async e so let's say we have an error right we're gonna say let error be now and then if we have an error we're gonna catch it right there I'm gonna say error goes e I'm gonna pass this error that's returned from Prisma into this error here and then uh, so if we have an error then we won't have a user here uh, that's my little boy crying he's only two months all right so we're going to say if error then we're going to return we don't we really don't want to return the error itself uh, because it might expose some things in our database so what we're gonna just say is we just return actually you can create a next error which looks more professional and um, is more in line with proper web development so let's just do that as an example I'm gonna copy something from here. I have like a ton of errors in this code that we wrote. Look at that. All right, so we're just gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna do that actually. So I'm gonna say, if we have an error, we are going to return, return create error like that. So that's what I'm just gonna say server error. There's a way in which you can check like what specific error Prisma is returning if it's like oh the ID doesn't exist or whatever you know if you want. But here we just return a server error. 
which is status code 500. So if we have an error, we're going to return that error. Otherwise, we're going to return the user. All right. So let's see what happens. Oh, yeah. We're going to restart this. We're going to restart the server. All right, here we go. So let's try this again. Okay, so here this returns, you know, a server error. This is what we wrote here. Yeah, create error. So that's, I think, better than it saying, oh, Prisma, this, this. Like, we don't even want people to know that we're using Prisma. <laughs> For our database, because that's kind of you know, that's not that's too 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 much information. But if we want to now just say hey, it's, we send an ID to this. Uh, if if it's ID five, that's within range. That makes sense. All right, try to get all the users. All right. So that's how you create, you delete a user using Prisma with. Uh, from your database with a little bit of error checking. All right, I hope you like this video. Hey, if you want a Nox3 starter kit that looks like this, all right, it's a Nox3 tail Tailwind starter kit. It comes with pages, a layout, um, custom plugin, TypeScript, and the code looks like this. It's yours, absolutely free. Just click the link below this video can download it and it's yours you can learn how to write great Nox 3 code hope you like this video talk to you soon